Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the movie trivia showdown. It is the quarantine edition. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on these exhibition matches. Mark Ellis, man, have these matches been good so far? There's just it, it's amazing how the competitors have just kind of been sitting and waiting to compete. And once once they do, even if we're not in front of the big lights or a live crowd, they're still ready to play. They, they, you know what, Christian? Everybody is performing like they're on stage at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, and they're ready to make kids fall in love for the first time. They are performing at maximum capacity. Everybody, their mom, their dad, their sister, and their cousin named Marvin is going to want to watch this match in particular. This is going to be some kind of battle because the competitors that we have, we have the Inner Geekdom champion. We have one of the biggest personalities of all time in Jay Washington. And then we have the two co-hosts of the Schmodown Rundown going head to head. And they've done this before. They played in a Back to the Future match. It was in some back alley somewhere where I think like, you know, three people were watching and maybe 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 a mother or a girlfriend or two. But for the most part, these two have been talking smack to each other for years upon years. But only one of them. Only one of them has written a book, and we're not convinced that he's not here just to promote said book. <laughs> that is Back from the Future, written by the one, the only, Mr. Brad Gilmore. And Christian, when you put these four competitors into one show, into one tournament, into one championship match, you're going to see some serious sh I, I almost swore. I almost well, swore. It was actually good, because right as you did, your, your microphone cracked for the first time. So there Ah, there it is. Ready to go. All right, Mark, if you are ready, then I am ready, and Let's we can bring in. Mark, see, how this, see how this piece of crap holds up. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds for the Back to the Future championship match. Introducing first, he is the master of controversy. He has people wanting to break his legs each and every week. He is Frankie California, a.k.a. Frankie Janish. Frankie Numbers, he is the Frankster. Hello, Frank. I've lost track of uh, how many nicknames uh, I've been given between yourself and Brad, but uh, it's good to be here. I'm, I'm glad to uh, finally do an exhibition match. I'm glad to have you in also. I'm also, and I, because I am a, a weekly listener to the rundown, I will also say thank you for giving us the good setup here with the nice camera, the plant in the background. <laughs> and it looks, it, it's really nice as opposed to the potato that you film with every uh, week for the rundown. Well, you know, you, you deserve the best question. And that's what I, give you. I think that's a little bit of an insult considering that the show is on my YouTube channel. That's All true. right. And his opponent, he is... One of the greatest managers in the history of the movie trivia showdown, the one, the only, the urban gladiator, Jay Washington. What's up? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am doing another match. I am back here in the showdown for your entertainment and my entertainment because, damn it, I have nothing else to do for entertainment. Well, it's good to have you back. Hey, I'm, glad, I'm glad to be back. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting at home like everybody else, and I decided to take a break from yoga. Yes, yoga. That's what I picked up during quarantine, yoga, to, you know, partake in this uh, buttocks whooping. All right. Yeah, Christian, it, 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 Christian, it looks like Frank uh, broke into a set for a Condé Nast photo shoot, and then with Jay, it looks like we're in an 11-year-old's bedroom, so this should get interesting. <laughs> Good day. Making sure everybody has their papers, their Sharpies, whatever it is, their whiteboards get ready because the next competitor is no stranger to the movie Trivia Shimona. He is the reigning inner geekdom champion of the world, the Smasher. Kevin Smith is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Time to smash. Time to smash. Time to smash. Who's this, who's this idiot in my living room right now taking credit for my good set? That, until that got to <laughs> calm down. Until that got to quiet down, I'm trying to do this answer. What happened? Who was that? Frank's <laughs> in my living room right now. That's my. <laughs> no wonder it looks nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. And finally, their opponent <clears throat> is up, the author of the latest book, Back from the Future a Celebration of the Greatest Time Travel Story Ever Told The Boat, Brad Gilmore. There he is. I the mean, author. extraordinary. I mean, come on. You had to have the boat in the Back to the Future exhibition match 
I'm ready. I'm willing. I'm able to take all these fools out. I'm excited, Christian. I appreciate you having me. Obviously, you can be on last, so I am the best yeah. of all time. I am the best. Well, no, can I tell you why I put you on last? Yeah. Because it will be embarrassing for you if you lose this match. Yep. But you know, I thought you. about it. Yeah. He just wrote a book and you're back right. in the future. Now, Kevin, if I can ask you, in which room in your house is Brad Gilmore currently? Brad is in the, yeah, he's, we're all together in the house. So we got Jay in the one bedroom. We got Brad in the garage. Frank's in the living room and I'm in the dungeon room. So <laughs> yeah, we're wow. all here. Where are you? Aren't you in my place too? I am. I am <laughs> under, I am, I'm, I'm in the Harry Potter little nook right <laughs> under the stairs. Well, I'm also broadcasting prop- live from Kevin Smet's house. <laughs> That's right. Props to Jay Washington also, who um, was able to. Mark and Draco was originally uh, slated for this match, and I, I reached out to Jay, and Jay was able to do it. So Jay is uh, is working here on on short notice, even though everybody else had a chance to prep a little bit. But Jay knows his stuff. Jay knows Back to the Future really, really well. So we are ready to go here on this fatal four way for the inaugural exhibition. Movie Trivia Schmodown, Back to the Future Championship. All right, Mark, rules for round number one. How does it go? Round number one, gentlemen, you're going to be tested in six different corners of Back to the Future know-how. We will be testing all three movies and the knowledge therein. We're not going to be testing the Saturday morning cartoon that I believe was. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. How about the video game? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I got no questions on the video game either. No. So it's just the movies, just the three films, and you're going to have six questions in round number one. Each question's worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, just make sure you have a writing device and a writing tablet in front of you. When we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote to the camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three round match. If you need us to repeat a question, that's when you use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the match. Plutonium is off limits to be used during the match. All right, so we start then with the boat. Are you ready? I'm ready. Smasher, are you ready? Ready. Jay Washington, are you ready? I'm here, let's do it. Frankie Numbers? You know it. Then let's get ready to schmodown. All right, here we go, guys. Round number one. First question comes from Back to the Future 2. What? does Marty call the nifty feature that Nike sneakers have in the year 2015? Starting off with Back to the Future 2, huh? I mean, it's a good way to start off. Featuring comedy store legend Jeff Scott. True. Five, four, three, two, one. We start with Brad Gilmore. Power laces, all right. Power laces it is. One point. Uh, Kevin Smets. Power laces. All right. Jay, Jay Washington. Power laces. All right. <laughs> and freaking numbers. Power laces. All right. They, well, the good news is that they're all beating me. So right now. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 two. All right. <laughs> they, uh, they, they are one up on me as well, Christian. Yeah. I sympathize. Um, your next question is in Back to the Future. As a series, we need the answer to the following question. What real life musician plays the character of Needles? Needles. Christian, you ever have anybody in your gang named Needles? No, but I want to name somebody that afterwards. I think Brett could pull it off. Remember the Needler from Halo? Hell yeah. Five. Very not useful. Yeah, it worked if you used it right. Three, two, one. Pens down, please. Smasher. How'd you flee? Yes. Jay. Didn't get it. Jay missed it. Uh, Frankie. Flee. And Brad. Flee. All right. So Jay Washington goes down one, as everybody else right now has two. Our right, next question. Question number three. This is from the original Back to the Future. What is Lorraine McFly's maiden name? Ooh. Good question. Yeah. <clears throat> And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and Jay. Bangs. Jay hits it. Frankie. Bangs. That's right. Numbers gets three. And now we have uh, Brad Gilmore. It's Bangs. And Smets. 
Feigned. Everybody hits that one. Again, letting everybody know that you have all are beating me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Your next question it comes from the realm of Back to the Future 3. And the question is, who plays Seamus McFly? Uh, Christian, I always thought it was Lorraine Bates. Like, like as in Kathy Bates. I knew her first name. <laughs> that, that's very good of you. You've seen the film. Five. Just watched it recently, too. Four. It's great. Three. Two. One. And we start with Frank. Michael J. Fox. Yes. Brad. Michael J. Fox. Uh, Smets. Michael J. Fox. And Jay. Michael J. Fox. So we see ourselves with Jay Washington with three, Frankie Numbers four, Gilmore with four, and Smith with four. So we get to Back to the Future Tech. Back to the Future Tech. That's our next uh, subject here. What device converts household waste to nuclear power for the DeLorean time machine's flux capacitor and time circuits? Finally, a question that Christian and I know the answer to. This one I would have gotten. Yeah. Which it's means good. you meant to hear you're an idiot. It's a Five, good visual gag. <laughs> four, three, two, one. Brad Gilmore. Mr. Fusion. Yes. Smets. Mr. Fusion. Okay. Mr. Fusion. And Frank. Mr. Fusion. Everybody get to that one. All right. So only Jay. Jay still has four, but he's only one behind as numbers Gilmore and Smets have a perfect round so far. So if they hit this, this is a perfect round for them, Mark. Let's get with the sixth and final question in round number one. All right. That is going to come from the world of quotes. Back to the future quotes. And your question, finish this line spoken by Buford Tannen in the third film. Eight o'clock Monday, Runt. If you ain't here, I'll hunt you and shoot you down like a what? Christian, one of my favorite things in Back to the Future is when Doc is putting stuff into Mr. Fusion, he throws the beer can in there and the sound it makes, it just, it's like, wow, that's really the future. That's right. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Smets? It's a duck. Correct. Jay? Duck. Yes. And Frank? Duck. Yes, and Brad? Goose. No, duck. <laughs> oh, challenge. Frank? You said the wrong name. <laughs> God damn it, I challenge already. <laughs> That's right. Uh, numbers, Gilmore, and Smets hit the perfect round. They will get the bonus question. They will have to write it down. Jay, you're going to sit out for this one, but we'll have Frank, the boat, and Smash all answering this question. Gentlemen, are you ready? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Bonus question. Who? co-wrote the entire trilogy with Robert Zemeckis. All right, Jay. I, it seems like Jay might know this one, Christian, although he is not eligible to write an answer. No, he is not. Five, four, three, two, one. Jay? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Frank? Uh, Bob Gale. Yes. And um, Boat. Bob Gale. Yep. Smash. Bob Gale. Yes. There you go. All right. So Jay Washington with five numbers. Gilmore and Smets with seven. As we get into round number two here, Mark, please tell them the rules. Round. All right. Let's bring out that wheel. Nope. We don't have one. <laughs> the wheel is actually inside my head. There's an algorithm that I'm using to make sure that your spin is random and is unlike anybody else's spin. We have 10 total categories that are available for Back to the Future trivia enthusiasts. The way that we play is whoever has the lead, and this point it's, it's tied for the lead in a three-way tie, you choose what number you want from one to 10. I will then tell you which category you spun. If you don't like that category, you do have a free spin to use, so you can spin again should you wish to. Before we start with the first spin, I will tell you all what the 10 categories are. And before it's your spin, you can ask me again to repeat what all the categories that are eligible are. So here's the categories that are currently on the wheel. It is Back to the Future 2, Scores and Soundtracks, 2015, 1955, Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 3, 1985, 2015, Actors and Actresses, 1885, and Locations. Mark, are, uh, 
Spinners and opponents, did you say, are they on the board? Spinners and, and uh, opponent choice are not on the board today. Okay. All right. So we actually were going to give Kevin Smets, because he is the reigning Intergeekdom champion, the opportunity. Would you like to go first or would you like to defer? I'd like to go first. I'm going to go first. All right, Kevin. So please pick a number from one to ten. Seven. Kevin, you have spun 1885. Uh, just for fun, let's respin that. Let's do two. Uh, you have spun Back to the Future two. All right. All right, Kevin. So you're going to get four questions in the realm of Back to the Future 2. Remember, gentlemen, that you guys can steal. So while Kevin gets his questions, be writing down your answers in case he misses or the same thing with a multiple choice. All right, here we go. Back to the Future 2. In alternate 1985, George McFly has been in the same place he's been for the past 12 years. Where is that specifically? Oh, Park Cemetery. There you go. Two points Ooh. for Kevin Smets. Not even blinking. Yeah. And Lincoln. All right. Here you go. In the alternate 1985 timeline, it is revealed that George had died in what year? 1973. Look at you. That's a math question. <laughs> March 15th. Rest his soul. Well, you did it so far. I like what you're doing here. All right. Next one. What Clint Eastwood Western is Biff watching on TV while in his hot tub? A fistful of dollars. Wow, look at the Inner Geekdom mm -hmm. champion showing exactly why he is the IG champ. Correct. The guy knows westerns too, Christian. That's right. And Watch out, Roca. Here is your last one. What is the name of the girly magazine that Biff replaces the sports almanac with when Marty finds it in Pr Principal Strickland's office? I found it in Frank's luggage. It's Ooh La La magazine. <laughs> hey, Ooh La La. Ooh La La. Ooh La La. You can yeah. see the deleted scene. Uh, Doc Brown actually had a Playboy in his luggage in the deleted scene. It's funny. But it's Ooh La La. That's Ooh my final answer. All right. So perfect for the Smasher. Has not missed a question yet. 15 for the Smasher, and now we are going to get to Brad Gilmore. Brad, would you like to defer to Frank, or would you like to... No, I'll right. go. Let's go. Let's spin right. this. So two is off the board, right? Uh, like, no, no, two is still on the board. You can say any number, and the way that I generated in my head, it'll still be a fresh category, but Back to the Future 2 as a category is off the board. And now it's one and nine now, right, Mark? Um... I'd, I'd prefer just to pick any random number, because two oh. is now different than it was for okay. Kevin. Okay. Okay. Let's go three. All right. You have spun Back to the Future one. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> really? This oh, game. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Why don't you ask yourself the questions and answer them? It's yeah. All right. Wait, so let's do this. Hey, wait. Don't put this on me. Let's go. All right. Okay, wait. Go. Brad, can you put the book on the shelf so we know you're not using it for the answer? <laughs> <laughs> And you can send it to me just to make sure that I know that it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Brad, your first of four questions in Back to the Future, not Back from the Future, the book that was about the movie. Name the actress who played Jennifer in the first film. Claudia Welt. Two mm -hmm. points. I love Claudia Welt. What's up, girl? All right. <laughs> she likes You're watching this ball with hello. Your next question for two more points. Back to the Future won won an Oscar in what category? Uh oh. Five. Four. Repeat. First one. Okay. Back to the Future won won an Oscar in what category? <sighs> Multiple choice. Okay. Is it A, sound, B, sound effects editing, C, visual effects, or D, editing? C? That is incorrect. So I'm going to wow. give the other choice to the multiple choice rundown once again. Your options. What category did Back to the Future 1 win an Oscar? Is it A, sound? B, sound effects, editing, C, visual effects, or D, editing. All right, we're going to count you down here in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Smash. 
sound editing B. That is correct for one point steal, and then we start with, uh, and then we get two numbers. B sound effects editing. Yes, and J to pick up one. Sound effects editing. You got it. All right, wow. so wow. picks up that steal, massive steal for Jay Washington there, and he finds himself with six points, numbers with eight. Gilmore, massive, massive miss there as it now nine, nine points. He gets his third question. He does have two more questions remaining in Back to the Future 1. Brad, your next question for two points. When 1955 Doc hears that Ronald Reagan is president in 1985, he jokingly asks if who is the vice president? Jerry Lewis. Brad is back on the answering train. Two points there. That is right. All right, Brad. And your last question. World of Back to the Future, the classic from 1985. What brand of canine food is Einstein supposed to be eating in the beginning of the film? Cow cam. I love this question, and you are correct for two points. All right, so Brad Gilmore, you can tell he's kicking himself in the butt there for missing that question, but he still he answers his other three. 13 points. Smets, though, sees himself with 16, but Frankie Numbers has a chance to actually, if he can go perfect here, he can tie uh, the smasher should he have a good round. And boy, would that be bragging rights over Brad Gilmore. Here That's we go. That's right, Christian. You got to look at the steals are being are going to be huge in this matchup for these last two oh, yeah. competitors in round number two. Frankie, you're up next. Which number feels lucky from one to ten? Yeah, I'll go with uh, nine. You went with nine, and you have selected 2015. You want to keep it? Yeah, I'll keep it. All right, Frank. You're going to get four questions in the realm of 2015. Are you ready? Ready. All right. Marty makes what comment after being assaulted by the Jaws 19 ad? Shark still looks fake. That is correct. <laughs> I love these movies so much. They're great. Every answer just makes me smile. All right. What 2015 TV cable channel broadcast beautiful views 24 hours a day. The Scenery Channel. With two more points. I usually watch scenery. I usually watch nature background on my TV. It's real, guys. Back to the Future 2 is real. <laughs> uh, Frankie, what is the last name of Marty's boss who fires him? The last name? The last name. Fujitsu. Can you pronounce that? I'm sorry. Fujitsu. That is correct. Fujitsu yeah. is correct. Okay. Sorry. I couldn't hear you. Fujitsu wow. is correct. Frankie numbers with a big, big hit there as you get your final question. Final question. What is the name of the type of hoverboard that Griff is using in 2015? Mattel. That is incorrect. All right. Oh, Griff. Oh, 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 my heart, oh, two points. My two points on the line here. Start with Jay Washington. A pit bull. Yes, it is. And Kevin. You can keep it. I got a pit bull. And Gilmore. I got a pit bull oh, now. Jay Gilmore. Gilmore. Oh. All right. So after that massive miss there by Frankie Numbers, who really looked like he was just chewing along here and matching Smets, instead he misses. And now we see Frankie Numbers with 14. Gilmore takes the lead over Frankie with 15, but Smets is in the overall lead with 18. However, Jay Washington has eight points and picked himself up three points with steals, which is really good considering that it is his time to now spin. All right, Jay, you're up. Number four. All right, Jay, you spun number four, and that corresponds to locations. Locations. I'll take it. I'm gonna take he's going to take it, Christian. All right, this could be risky, but he's going to take it, Mark. I think it's a smart play because, look, look, Back to the Future 1, which is, you know, what I think everybody might feel the most confident is already off the board. So now you got to take a chance. True. All right, Jay. Your first of four questions in Back to the Future locations. In part two, what is the name of Biff's casino in the alternate 1985? Oh. Biff's Pleasure Paradise and Casino. 
Give him that. Cannot accept that. Give him that. Cannot accept this pleasure of paradise and casino. Okay. And okay. All right. So now we're gonna move over, and he missed with the two points. So for two point steal, we're gonna ask uh, Frankie numbers. Just pleasure paradise. We need it. We can't just accept pleasure paradise. And now Gilmore with two points, if he can get. Biff's it. pleasure paradise. Can't accept it. Biff's pleasure paradise hotel and casino. It's uh, the the answer I'm seeing is Biff Tannen's Pleasure Paradise. Ooh, that's you know what? Right. That's right. Well, Gotta have the last name in there. All right, so nobody capitalizes there. Nobody capitalizes that's off fair. that. That's fair. That's fair. And so it there we go. So even though he missed his first one, he doesn't see anything really hurt him. But we get to question number two now. All right, Jay, your next question in the world of locations. What is Doc Brown's address in 1955 that Marty gets from the directory and asks Lorraine's parents about? We need the number and the street. 1640 Riverside Drive. Nice. Yeah, well, he knew that one. He knew that <laughs> there one. you are. And he gets himself now. He's got 10 points. So if he can get his next two pointers, he can tie Frankie numbers. All right. Next one. Here we go, Mark. Jay into double figures. Jay, your next question. Your penultimate one in this round. When lightning... Excuse me. What is the name of the housing development where Marty's family lives in 2015? Hilldale. That is correct for two more points. Two more points. There you go. Okay. All right. Jay, with this two-point question, if you get it right off the bat, you're going to tie Frankie numbers at 14 points heading into round number three. Your question is, what is the name of the cafe that the teens frequent in 1955? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. First one. Yep. Yeah. What is the name of the cafe that the teens frequent in 1955? Like piranhas, the three of these guys. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. I can provide that. Is it A, Bill's Cafe, B, Hill Valley Cafe, C, Lou's Cafe, or D, Bluebird Cafe? Lou's Cafe. Jay Washington has 13 points going into round number three. That is correct. Crap. Good scrappy performance there by Jay. I mean, missed that punch, but still got himself okay. But look at the score here. Jay Washington with 13 points. Frankie Numbers with 14. The favorite, Gil Gilmore with 15. And the Inner Geekdom champion with the lead with 18 points. Tell him Gilmore to suck it. <laughs> well, Oscar, I mean, Christian. It. <laughs> he is the one paying the rent at that house, so you would think Evan should get some points going into round three. You would think so, but no. Look, this is the this is the inner geekdom champion here who has to know these movies inside and out, so it makes sense why he is in the lead. All right, Mark, we got the third and final round, the championship round. How does it go? In round number three, I'm going to get a series of numbers from each of the four competitors. I need three numbers from each of you. These numbers can range from one to twelve. As soon as we get your numbers, each number is going to correspond to a different corner of Back to the Future know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five points. There is no stealing in round number three. There's no penalty for missing a question in round number three. Smasher, the rent I'm gonna, payer. I'm going to use the same three numbers I did for the champions match. Two, seven, and 12. All right. My lucky numbers. <laughs> All right, now we go with uh, Gilmore. Uh, three, eight, and 11. Three, eight, and 11 for Gilmore. Uh, right. I, see what <laughs> I will go uh, one, five, and 10. One, five, and 10. <laughs> uh, all right, and finally, Jay Washington. <laughs> Four, six, and nine. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. All of you. Well done. <laughs> that was funny. All right. So we're going to then start 
right now we're going to start with Jay Washington, who sees himself uh, with 13 points. He is going to get the two-pointer, and he chose category number four. That is Back to the Future, Gadgets, and Tech. Back to the Future, Gadgets, and Tech. Are you ready, Jay? Yeah. All right. In the first film, when Marty first meets young Doc in 1955, Doc is wearing a device on his head that he built to enable him to do what? Read people's mind. That's correct. All right, two points for Jay Washington, who now sees himself with a lead now over Frankie Numbers. Now Frankie will have to answer his two points. All right, Frank, you selected number one for your two-point question, and that corresponds to Back to the Future Part 1. And your question for two points in Back to the Future. What quippy line does Marty say after his guitar blows up Doc's giant speakers? Rock and roll. Yes, he does. Two more points for Frankie Numbers, who finds himself now with 16 points. And now we see Brad Gilmore have to answer two points. Brad, you chose category number three. Scores and soundtracks. No, there's no chance. There's no, there's no chance that you missed this because I know this one. Uh, in scores and soundtracks, what song is playing when Marty walks across Town Square in 1955 for the first time? Mr. Sabin. That is correct. Good All right. Um, we jump back. I know. We jump back to Jay Washington, who now has to hit his three pointer. Uh, Mark, he chose category number six. Uh, yes, you did, Christian. Uh, you were asking questions to Jay. Would you like me to take over for you? <laughs> uh, no. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> category six. Category six. 1985. Okay. 1985. In part one, what did Doc give the Libyans instead of a bomb? I gave him a box of shiny old pinball casings. Uh, can't pinball take pinball parts, pinball cases. Yeah, pinball parts. It was a pinball machine with parts. Mm. It's damn near the same. Oh, don't do this. I think he says. <laughs> oh, go no, ahead. What do you think he says? He says he wrote the book. Uh, a shoddy casing full of used pinball machine parts. Bomb that's casing exactly. full of that. Yeah. That he says used pinball machine parts. Yeah. Mark, how do you want to? How do you want to run that? You want to give it to Jay? Um, I would uh, lean towards giving it to Jay only because we didn't ask for the exact quote. Yeah, I'll get, and I feel the same way, so I'm going to give it to Jay. Uh, <laughs> I think that's fair. Uh, so we're going to give it to Jay, and plus the fact I can breathe easy and say it's an exhibition. Uh, <laughs> so, challenge! I challenge! You already knew what was coming up. <laughs> we're going to talk about it this week on Backstage. Uh, <laughs> for three, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. We'll call in to see what you thought about it. Uh, whether or not Jessica Alba will be there to ask the question. Uh, all, right. So, all right, Jay Washington hits it. He has 18 points now. And so now we have to go back to Frankie Numbers, who will now have to hit his three-pointer. Who he chose. All right, Frank, you selected number five for your three-point question. Oh, yes. And Frank, this comes in the world of Back to the Future 3. Okay. And the query is for three points. In Back to the Future 3, Marty says that he learned to shoot at what specific place? 7 Eleven. Damn right he did. There you go. So now Frank has. Frank has 19. Mm hmm. Has 19. All right. Gilmore has 17 right now. So now we're going to go back to, to Brad Gilmore, who's got to hit his three pointer. And Brad Gilmore, he chose category number eight. Brad, category number eight. You chose actors and actresses. All right. Here we go. Which film in the series features the actors Joe Flaherty and Jason Scott Lee? <laughs> Five. Back Four. to the Future 2. Correct. For three points. That's correct. So now Gilmore sees himself 
even though he's sweating it out a little bit, he hit it. Uh, so he is he is the only person so far. So now we get to Kevin Smets finally, who has yeah. going to hit. He's got to hit a two pointer, Mark. All right, the Smasher, your question. The two points you selected, category number two, and that corresponds to the year 2015. And your question What is the name of Marty's son, who is also played by Michael J. Fox? Marty Jr. Two points for Kevin Smets. He's back in the lead, Christian. All right, so right now. Uh, you know what? I'm a yeah. Jail. Yeah, I'm a yeah. challenge. So I, can, I can challenge it too because his name is not Marty Jr. His name is Martin McFly Jr. Wow. Yeah. And, well, let me no tell last you, name. you're you on the bottom right there should not be challenging after the pinball machine parts. They didn't ask for the full <laughs> name anyway. They just said what's the name. If they said the full name, I would yeah, say. I'll 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 the I'll name make, is the I'll first name and the last name. I'll, I'll, I'll make the ruling here, guys. Um, we asked what is the name of Marty's son. We did not ask for the full name. Um, we just needed, uh, it, it's pretty implied that it's McFly. And so we're going to go Marty, Mc, Marty Jr. is acceptable. Yep. McMarty? I love it. McMarty. It's his new name is McMarty. So, uh, huh? Jay Washington has 18. <laughs> Numbers has 19. Brad Gilmore has 20. And Smets has 20. So we start with Jay Washington in order to stay in the game here. He needs to hit his five-pointer. If he hits his five-pointer, he's in it. He stays in it. If not, we drop him out of the chat room and he comes back for the post interview afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, start. let's start with Jay Watt. You chose number nine, Jay, for your five pointer. 1885. 1885. Here we go. Jay, what is the name of the stagecoach that Buford and his gang rob the day before he has his duel with Marty? <laughs> I hate y'all so much for this one. And five, four, <sighs> two. Repeat the question. <laughs> one. The second one. What is the name of the stage coach that Buford and his gang robbed the day before he has his duel with Mark? The name of the stage coach. Five, four, three, two, one. That's I it. Yeah, about Pine City Stage. Oh, I can't remember what it was. All right. So oh, with that, God. thank you, Jay. With that, Jay Washington's been eliminated. Jay, we'll see you in the post, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have our final three: Frankie Numbers, Brad Gilmore, and the Smasher Kevin Smets. So Jay's out. Now we have Frankie Numbers who needs to hit his five. He's in the same position that Jay Washington was just in there at Mark. That's right, Christian. If Frankie gets this, he's still in the match. If he misses, he has a future that he can look forward to in the waiting room. Frank, you selected number 10 for your five-point question. That corresponds to Back to the Future 2. And your question. Doc Brown gets rejuvenated in the future. They took out some wrinkles, did hair repair, changed the blood, added a good 30 to 40 years to his life. They also replaced what? His spleen and colon. We would have accepted either one, and he got both of them, Christian. Frankie's staying in the game. That's it. Look at that. that Frankie Frank numbers. Frankie numbers finds himself now at 24 points. All he's got to do is sit back and wait. He's either going to... He's done everything that he can. So now it's up to Brad. Well, you know, it's Kevin Smets. Kevin Smets now has to hit his three-pointer. Kevin mm -hmm. Smets hit his three-pointer here. And Smets, did you ask uh, Did you ask him? Or was I that did. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So Kevin Smets now, he is up to hit his three-pointer mark. Here we go. Christian, uh, Kevin chose number seven for his three-point question. And Joe Theismann's number corresponds to locations slash names. Locations or names in the world of Back to the Future. And Smasher, your three point question is With his mass fortune, what company does Biff start that makes him even richer? Biff Co. That is correct for three points. Toxic waste disposal. He is not. So, I mean, so 
you have these two guys from the rundown who really know their stuff, and they week in and week out they're talking about how good Kevin Smasher Smets is, and right now they're seeing those effects as he has not True. missed a question, has not missed one. All right, so now Brad Gilmore. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now the score is Frankie numbers twenty four. Brad Gilmore has twenty. If he hits his five pointer, he eliminates his co host. He will knock out Costa. At least that could be a prize should Kevin Smets hit his five-pointer. If he hits his five, Frankie's out, and it's between the boat and the smacker. Brad, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Brad, you chose category number 11. Category 11, Hill Valley. Hill Valley. What is the name of the newspaper? that documents the life of Doc Brown and the clock tower incident, among other things, in Hill Valley. Repeat the question. What is the name of the newspaper that documents the life of Doc Brown and the clock tower incident, among other things, in Hill Valley? The Hill Valley Telegraph. Correct for five points. Okay. And with that... Frankie Numbers has been eliminated. Frankie, thank you. I'm sure this will be a topic of conversation on the rundown. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we are down to our final two competitors. We have Kevin Smets, the boat, Brad Gilmore. If Kevin hits it, he wins yet another exhibition match here. If he loses, if he, if he misses, then Brad Gilmore is the Back to the Future champion. All right, Mark, here we go. All right, Kevin, the Smasher Smets. It all comes down to this. You selected for your five-point question the category of number 12, and that corresponds to a year. That year is 1955. All right. And your question. In Back to the Future 2, when old man Biff gives young Biff the sports almanac in 1955, they listen to a UCLA college football game on the radio. What is the final score of that game? UCLA, 19, Washington, 17. Christian, we didn't even need you. A winner and new. Wow. The future champion. Kevin, the Smashers! Yes, he's done it again. He's done it again. I just threw Bad Gilmore out without even talking to him because he knows he's embarrassed. Look at him. I'm just going to show you something. He's embarrassed. Oh, <laughs> I get a little excited. I get a little excited. No, he was, he was great. Brad Gilmore had a great comeback there. He missed that one thing with the Oscars. Got himself all the way back and shows absolutely he is an absolute professional when it comes to Back to the Future. But you got the Inner Geekdom champion once again. Kevin, it's your second one. You beat Merle. You beat Roca. You beat Damon. You beat Brad Gilmore at his game. Jay Washington. Frank, how you how you feeling right now? You got to be on fire. Change has got to be here. I feel great. I mean, it's just good getting, you know, I've been, I thought I had a match on J January 25th. So when that got pushed and everything, yeah. it's like everybody's talking about if I'm going to get rusty. And I'm like, no, man, like I just keep going. And one of the things about the inner geekdom is there's so many bad movies, but what aren't bad movies are back to the future. They are my favorite movies, probably of all of them, aside from Star Wars. So uh, it's really easy to watch these things over and over again and literally be able to quote it back. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've kind of just been still studying for Chandru. So this it just hit at the right time. So, yeah, yeah. it's just great because I love these movies so much. You know, I got the got the framed thing here of my two guys oh, right well, here. So well, <laughs> yeah. it, was a hell of a, it was a hell of a match all the way through. But I'm going to bring in the, the rest of the guys now. Yeah. yeah. So there is uh, guys. It was a hell of a match, Brad. I see yourself kicking yourself over that Oscar. Yeah. You know it. I know. I so. Yeah, I I knew it afterward. I when I said C, I knew it was actually B, and it was one of those things. That, you know, I think the pressure of the match actually got to me. You know, Frank and I talk about this every week about under the lights and this, that, and the other. And uh, you know, I had my don't tell Peter moment, and it was the Oscars question. And uh, you know, it happens to everybody. I'm kicking myself over, but hey, man, I came a second, and look. If I was going to lose to anybody, the Inner Geekdom champion isn't somebody who I who I could be too upset about losing to. So congratulations, Thanks, Smash. Well, Thanks, yeah, man. Christian, it, yeah. it seems Our like uh, Brad is just happy he didn't lose to Frank Janish. Frank, yeah. you almost upset 
your co-host. How did it feel to get that close and then have it slip away? You know, I'm, I'm not really, I don't feel that bad that I lost because, look, I, I did a rookie mistake in, in not listening to the whole question. I didn't listen to the whole question, so I didn't say Pitbull. And so I basically gifted Brad two points. And that was the only reason he was in the position that he was in. <laughs> I just feel bad that I deprived the audience of uh, sudden death between me and Smith because uh, that could have been great. Well, I mean, and Jay Washington, who, like I said in the beginning of this, he, he was I, I, last minute. I kind of he was able to fill in. Thank you for that, Jay. And no problem coming back and because you you were down after that first round but then you came back and you started putting the pressure a lot of steals in that second round how are you feeling i mean i feel good about it yeah it is a lot because again guys are studying regularly and you know they guys the three guys i have here y'all are dope i'm just keeping real brad you know your stuff you got a book bro kevin you the ig you the, you the ig champ why are we even discussing this and frankie you sit there and criticize everybody weekly so you gotta know something so <laughs> my thing is like for me to jump in last minute when you hit me up earlier this morning it wasn't like christian hit me up a day ago right, or two wow. days ago christian hit me like maybe three four hours before this and so to be able to jump on man it, it was fun it was doing it you know i love the movies I, I was telling christian these are one of some movies i can continually watch the whole trilogy over and yeah. over and over again so i was i was glad to do it with you guys I'm, i was happy to have fun man it was great to play again and compete and you know what i'm saying it, it, it hurts though it was, it, was, it was good though to watch. It was a lot of fun. And Brad, you know, kind of piggybacking off of what Ella said, now, does it feel good that you at least got to knock out Frank? Well, you know, I've already done that before, so it didn't it didn't feel like anything new. You know, I knock out Frank pretty much consistently on the rundown every single week. I mean, look at him. Look at this. Look at him. He's an idiot. But, but, but I will say for uh, for Kevin Smith, um, you know, again, just phenomenal job. Kevin, Kevin, this is for you. The Back oh, to the Future wow. Championship belt, 88 miles per hour. You got I'd sell for blocks. one of your books, bro. I, I want to get that book. I want to sell. I have one. I'm, I'm very excited about it, actually. It's well, I mean, you can so buy funny. that. Okay, you know buy I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brad, Brad, I have a question for you. For Back from the Future, Yeah. Is, can you confirm or deny whether we actually find out the information about the Oscar ceremony in your book, or do I have to buy another book no. to get that? <laughs> uh, yeah. You have to buy another book that's not this one. I'm not going to talk about that shit. Ever you didn't again. have a chapter ever again. Um, yeah, but right. yeah. we talk about all kinds of stuff in my book, Back from the Future. Number it's one on Amazon right now, so go check awesome. it out. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you guys. Thank you. And again, once again, I really appreciate it to all you guys for, for showing up here, able to do this. It was a lot of fun. And I think that that's every one of these that we've done so far. Um, the theme has been to have fun. And all you guys have been doing exactly that. Thank you. Thank you to Jay. Thank you to Brad, to Frank, and of course to the Inner Geekdom champ, uh, Kevin the Smasher Smets. Guys, I appreciate it. I'm sure we're going to see some more. I know, Brad, we're going to see more of you. You're going to be in the Bond match. That's going to be yep. uh, some. Jay Washington's going to be going after that MCU championship. Yeah. Which yeah. is nice. Yeah. That one I think we're going to probably take a little bit more serious for sure because last time there were almost deaths involved in the last <laughs> MCU. <laughs> Baba Yaga, never forget. Baba Yaga, never forget it. Thomas oh Patank, God. never forget. Never forget. And then uh, Kevin, the Smasher Smith side. I don't know. That that's the, is that it for you? We got you. No, I, I, I'm going to run drills with my partner uh, uh, Robert Parker on Lord of the Rings on oh, in a couple days. Of All right. Yeah, yeah. So no, and then, I think Frank, you're we, we may have, Frank, you coming back or or no yet? And I think I'm done with this. Now, okay. yeah. All it's right. Coverboard trivia. He's Kevin. done forever. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I'm just going to drop you out for now. Again, thank you. I really Thanks, appreciate guys. it. We'll see you guys soon. Um, all right. So, oh, I dropped out. Mark. No, I didn't drop out, Mark. Where's Kevin? No, Mad Dog's still here. All right. Mark, I mean, that's three great matches that we've had back to back to back. And, and, and a little bit of an upset, you would say, here, too, when it comes to because obviously you can tell Brad, Gil Brad Gilmore knows Back to the Future inside and out, but Oscars tripped them up. I, I, really, I really look at this as an exercise in training for the Schmodown and yeah. how intensely the competitors that currently have belts work for those for those prizes because you have a guy that wrote a book that did research to write a book on all three movies and it's just a different kind of muscle that you exercise when it's actually recall on the moment trivia and so I think that a lot of fans are going to watch this match and say I really have a lot of respect for people who study in the way to answer trivia questions versus writing by the way a great book like you can take the almanac from the future and you can keep it because i am infinitely more richer up here for yeah. having read brad's book back from the future 
Well, it also adds more to the mystique of uh, of Kevin Smets because if you're if you're a Schmodown fan, obviously if you're watching this match, you are, and it is this is the exhibition match is just for you guys. But the guy just keeps winning, and he keeps doing. He finds a way to do it, and he does it in a way. He's. It doesn't matter if it's exhibition. Doesn't matter what it is. It's 110 percent, no matter what it is. He beats Dan Merle. He beats Roca. He beats Alex Damon in a match, and now he beats a, a guy who literally wrote the book on Back to the Future. So he and he didn't miss a question. He didn't miss a single question the entire time. So that is something. If I'm Chandru and I'm watching this match, I'm a little nervous. Chandru's pretty good all on his own himself. But this is this is another this is another thing, exhibition or not. It just shows you how for real you have to take Kevin Smith. That's right. We learned uh, two wins happened today. UCLA won 19 to 17, and Kevin Smith beat a bevy of classic Back to the Future know-how enthusiasts, and he earned his win today. Yes, and Jay Washington officially knocked me out in this match because I got three right. All right. Dude, I, I love these movies, especially the first one, but I was like, I knew the flea question. Yeah. I knew a couple other ones, but I just, most of it is out of my brain at this point. No, but they, it's not out of, maybe, look, who knows? Maybe we'll see this again. Maybe we'll see, I'm sure that Brad Gilmore is chomping at the bit to get another shot at Smets. I can tell you that right now. So I would, I would love to maybe put that together down the line. The question is, what do you guys think so far? Because you really are going to be the ones to tell us at the end of all these exhibition matches, which ones did you like? Which ones should stick around? What do you want to see more of? Which is the one that you were like, oh, man, at the edge of your seat? Because that's we're in a crazy situation right now. We know that this is crazy time. But this is almost like a mini league. All these other matches that we have going on and you have access to it. So thank you guys because of everybody on this, the $10 and up tier that are able to watch these matches. You're keeping the show going. You're keeping the show afloat. You're keeping the everything. The, the lights are running. So thank you guys for everything that you're doing here for us. And we hope that you're enjoying the, uh, the content for the baby carrots. Mark Ellis. I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time.